Well, welcome. If you're watching this video right now, odds are you probably came from TikTok or some other social media platform and you want to know what does it take to get to heaven. Maybe you just said a prayer and accepted Jesus as your Lord, or maybe you're just curious. Maybe you've been seeking God and you've been asking the Lord to give you a sign. Well, if that's you, this is your sign. You know, it was only five years ago that I was an atheist. I couldn't believe in a God because of the way I was raised. I had daddy issues. I didn't have a good relationship with my parents. I grew up in a crazy atmosphere and it just felt like there was no way a good God could exist. But uh, somebody taught me about the reality of the Bible. And the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that the thief or the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That the devil's very real. And his intentions are to steal things from your life, to kill things in your life, and to destroy whatever he can in your life. But it says right after that that Jesus, God, comes to give life and life abundantly. See, when you understand just that one Bible verse, you'll realize that God has an intention for you to live a good life, for you to be free from bondage, that you don't have to live life anxious or depressed or suicidal, but God actually has a plan for your life to take you places that you never thought you could actually go and to eventually spend eternity with Him in heaven. That's why it says in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus, the Christ, the Savior of the world, to die for us that anyone who would believe in him as their Lord and as their Savior would not perish, but would actually have everlasting life. Five years ago, I made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior because somebody had shared the simple gospel with me. The reality is, you can tell just by looking at the universe, just by looking at the earth, that this beauty of a planet and this universe did not create out of nothing. It obviously had an intelligent creator, and it says in the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, that in the beginning God spoke, and he spoke the universe into existence. He said, let there be light after he made the heavens and the earth. And God intellectually designed everything perfectly and good and in order according to his will. But as you continue reading in the Bible, you see that mankind disobeyed God. They went against what God had put in order. That's called sin. They willfully disobeyed God. And when they sinned against God, they ate from the one tree in the garden that he had created. He said, you can eat from all these other trees, Adam and Eve, but do not eat of this one tree, the knowledge of good and evil tree, because the moment that you do, you will surely die. Well, if you're familiar with the story at all, Satan, the devil, snuck into the garden and he deceived Eve. And he told Eve that God was lying to her. He got Eve to question her identity, to question the word of God, the same way that he does today. And she obeyed the devil. She ate of the one tree that she wasn't supposed to eat of, and she got Adam to do it too. Mankind fell into sin, and that's why it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we're all in need of a Savior. We are in need of being brought back into relationship with God so that we can have connection with him. Now, for me, I had heard messages like this or similar to it growing up, but I had never encountered the living God. But there came a day, kind of like today might be your day, where I was hungering for the supernatural. I was hungering for an encounter with the living God. You can't read the Bible and go four pages without seeing a miracle, without seeing the power of God on display. And I said, you know what? If the God of this universe is real, if the God of the Bible is real. I want to encounter that God, Jesus Christ. And I began to seek out Jesus. And one night I was at a worship night that my friend had invited me to. I was sort of skeptical, but I knew that in order for me to encounter God, I had to go all in. I had to make a decision to humble myself and say, you know what? If God really is real, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm just going to believe that I can have an encounter with him. And that's exactly what happened. I went to a worship night and I stood in the back of the room. I kind of stiff armed everybody and I watched all of these Christians worship and pray and they spent time seeking God. Now, I wasn't really seeking God in the room, but I was invited. So I just kind of stood back there and all of a sudden it felt like liquid love just poured over my body. I felt a peace that surpassed all knowledge. 
I felt this inward love and this joy that I'd never experienced before in my life. It was, it, there was no way it could be natural and it had to be a supernatural encounter. And I encountered the love of God that night. And I knew that I was having an encounter with God and I decided to go all in. And shortly after that, I made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior. I prayed that he would come into my heart to make me a born again Christian. And I started my relationship with him. So I'm assuming that because you're watching this video, you're in a similar boat right now. Well, you're about to make the best decision of your life. But really quickly, before I pray with you, I want to go over a couple scriptures with you. Because at the end of the day, my opinion doesn't really matter. My experience doesn't really matter. The Word of God is what matters. It triumphs over every experience. It triumphs over every opinion. You always want to stand on the truth that is the Bible. And this is what the Bible says. If you'll go with me to Romans chapter 10, if you have a Bible, otherwise, just listen to what this has to say, and then we're going to pray together. It says here in Romans chapter 10, talking about people that want to be saved, people that don't want to go to hell, because the reality is there is a hell. The Bible teaches very clearly that there's a hell, but it also teaches that there's a way to escape hell, to spend eternity with Jesus, to repent of your sins, to turn away from your old life and give your life to him. And this is what it says. It says in Romans chapter 10, starting in verse 6, but the righteousness, which is based on faith, says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. What does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. God's word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's even in your heart. This is the word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. There's no questions. If you're willing to confess Jesus as your Lord, if you truly believe it in your heart that he died for you, you will be saved. And listen to this. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the Bible teaches that there's something supernatural that happens when somebody believes in their heart and speaks out of their mouth. There's a supernatural action that happens, and it's called salvation. It's the action of faith. You know, it says in Ephesians chapter 2 that we're saved by the grace of God so that no man can boast, but we're saved through our faith. So if we're saved through our faith, and Romans 10 shows us what that looks like, then faith is to believe in one's heart and to confess something with their mouth. So if you believe today that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he came to the earth. He became flesh. He put on flesh. He lived a sinless life and he died for you and he rose again from the dead. If you believe that today, the Bible says, according to your faith, as you confess that out of your mouth, you will act on your faith and that will create salvation. Jesus will come to live into your heart by faith and he will make you a new creation. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse uh, 17, that any man who is in Christ has passed away, meaning all things have passed away. He has become a new creature. It says all things from his past, all things he used to do, all things he used to think, all things that he used to be attached to, they all pass away. And it says all things become new. Behold, any person that is in Christ, that has given their life to Jesus, is a totally new creature. And that word in the Bible actually means a new species. So when you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you actually become a totally new species. And I can attest to it. I mean, I got kicked out of college twice for partying, for bad grades. I mean, I was a crazy man, but I believed the Bible and I believed in my heart and I confessed with my mouth on October 25th, 2017, that Jesus Christ was my Lord and my Savior. I received the infilling of the Holy Spirit and I became a born again Christian, a totally new man. I walked away from my old life of partying, of drugs, of women, of all that stuff. I walked away 
forever. And now I live according to the Bible and I actually preach the gospel. You would have never thought, but this is a walking miracle right here. And if God can do it for me, God will do it for you. Now, if you say right now, Talon, I believe you. I believe your story. I believe Jesus is the son of God and I want to make him my savior. I want to give my life to Jesus and I want to spend eternity in heaven. If that's you right now, I want you to pray this very simple prayer with me and we're going to believe that God's word is true and that he will do exactly what he says that he will do. This is what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes wherever you're at and lift your hands up toward heaven in a posture to receive. And just simply repeat these words with me. It's not the word, well, I can't even say that. It is the words that make you saved. But I want you to believe this. I'm just giving you this prayer because many people don't know how to pray to God. So you can just follow me. This isn't just copying my words. This is believing what we're saying together. This is praying to a living God. You're not just speaking randomly. God hears this prayer right now. So close your eyes, lift your hands up toward heaven and say these words after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe your word. And today I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. He came to the earth to be born of a virgin. He walked the earth, lived a sin-free life. He died so I could be forgiven. He rose again from the dead and he is alive. Father, forgive me of all my past sins. I turn away from them now and I give my life fully to Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Make me born again. I choose this day to serve God. And I turn my back on this world and the devil forever. I am born again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I believe if you just said that prayer, you just felt a heavy weight lift off of you. The same way I did when I gave my life to Jesus. I remember it felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders and on my chest. But when I prayed and I gave my life to Jesus, he took all that off of me. He put his spirit inside of me and I woke up a totally new person. And I believe that's your story right now as well. Well, if you just said that prayer with me, congratulations. The Bible says if even one person turns away from their old ways and gives their life to Jesus, then all of heaven rejoices. So I believe all of heaven is throwing a party for you right now. What you need to do now is to make sure that you find a good local church. You can type into your phone, Full Gospel Church near me. Find a church that teaches the Bible. Don't find a woke church that's preaching that you can like live however you want. No. Find a church that teaches the truth about the Bible. To live holy. That they believe in the things of the spirit realm. Find a church that will not compromise because the reality is Jesus is coming back very soon. You don't have time to go to a church that doesn't preach the full counsel of God's word. So go, find a good church and make sure that you stay plugged into my teachings. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure that you listen to what I put on this channel because I do my best to build you up in the spirit, to train you in the ways of God, and to, uh, to live right so that we end up in heaven together. One last thing before I send you off. Draw a line in the sand today. You're going to have friends. You're going to have family. You're going to have people that attempt to get you to turn away from the decision that you just made or to get you to live some greasy Christian life. They're going to try to tell you that living holy, that not going to the bar, not doing drugs, not drinking, not having sex before marriage, not watching porn. There's going to be people that try to convince you that all of that stuff is crazy, that you're nuts for going the way of a Christian. They're going to probably say something like you're involved in a cult. I'm telling you what, I've heard it all. Don't listen to them. The devil will do whatever he can to get you to live like a heathen and go to hell. But I'm telling you right now, if you obey this Bible, you obey what it says, you do everything that I just told you to do, you stay plugged into a good church and you follow the voice of God, you will never, ever go wrong. I love you so much. If you just said this prayer with me and you gave your life to Jesus, make sure you send me a message on my website. Go to revivalway.com and you can click... um. 
contact us at the bottom or there should be a contact us tab or you can go follow me on Instagram at taylin.michael and send me a message on Instagram. Tell me you just got saved. Tell me you just gave your life to Jesus so that I know how to pray for you and uh, I can send you some free content to help you out. Well, I love you. God bless you. Thanks for watching this video. Share it with a friend that needs to be born again. Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Adios.